quote unquote normal pots. Uh, I've got here IE one, two bet, and one or more cold callers. Okay, which we'll get into the definitions of shortly. Uh, three bet pots are then when there's a raise and a re raise. So we've got here IE pots with one open raiser, one re raiser, and one or more callers. Heads up pots and uh, three player pots are then when you're yeah of course versus you know one or one or two opponents. Multi way pots and then three opponents or more. All right, and I've got this little um, bit on the end. Whenever you're in multi way pots, most players are a lot more honest. That means they're not going to be making a lot of bluffs. Um, yeah, your probability of opponents folding just markedly drops with every single player involved in the hand. So. Yeah, multi-way pots means, you know, respect the bet a lot more than you would, say, in a heads-up situation. Um, yeah, and again, see the player profiling videos and the um, yeah, poker math videos and all that. Pre-flop betting. This is where we are now, and I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down here um, so that we can get all of this in the viewing area. Good. Okay, here's the deal. Pre-flop and the game of No Limit Texas Hold'em. We have bet sizing. There's a general rule, <laughs> and this is a rule that applies to short stack play, hybrid play, and big stack play. If any given bet, any given raise, any given call commits more than half of your stack, you're either going to push or you're going to fold. It's no longer a call situation, unless, of course, you're on the river. Um, anything, any bet raiser call on yeah, pre-flop, flop, or turn that commits half of your stack or more, you're in push or fold. And I want you guys to really take that one to heart. A lot of guys will even say um, anything, I mean, a bet raiser call that will commit a third of your remaining stack puts you in push or fold. And yeah, it's very often the case, depending on depending on the scenario. Uh, so keep that in mind. I mean, anything, anytime you get into one third or one half your stack um, on any given move, you're not thinking, ah, oh, shit, should I call? Don't know. Da 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 da. It's should I should I put everything that I have remaining in front of me in the middle of the pot, or should I just let this one go? All right, that's a general rule that actually pervades everything else that we're going to cover right now. So keep that one definitely at the forefront. All right. Um, online poker. They don't talk about, you know, um, raising, re-raising, re-re-raising, re-re-raising, re, 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 raising, re, 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 uh, pre-flop. Um, statistic, uh, statistically saying you're going to see a one bet, which means posting the big blind. All right. So you can even, I mean, actually, you could even break that down and say the small blind is a half bet, right, or 0.5 bet, say. The one bet is posting the big blind pre-flop. The two bet is the first raise. That means when you make a raise pre-flop, and you're the first one to do anything, you want to be raising three to four big blinds, which is what this is right here, three to four big blinds, plus one big blind per limber. Uh, I've written here, novice bet size equals the perceived strength of their hand. What that means is, in my experience, I mean, especially playing with uh, a lot of novice players or relatively inexperienced players, um, especially live, you know, you see, you see the relatively new guy, or you know, a lot of these. Yeah, I'll call new guys also uh, relatively new players. That means that they've only been playing for two or three years, um, and they've maybe seen a lot of videos and feel like they're just the hottest shit that ever happened, um, but they ultimately have no idea. Um, very often what happens is these kind of guys they'll you know they'll bet exactly the perceived strength of their hand which is quite funny um, it's not always the case but you just need to keep a heads up if you catch guys like this um, they're very easy to read just based on the, the bet size so you know the guy you know the novice guy here he wakes up with a pair of aces and you know he he gets physically tense uh, starts to breathe a little bit shallow maybe his hand starts to shake <laughs> Um, or he reaches for his, you know, cigarette or his uh, his beer or whatever, and you know all these different all these different signs. He's looking away from you. He's trying to be unnoticed, you know, before he's 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 on um, to make a move, and all this stuff just screams uh, strength, at least perceived strength. And then of course the question for you is, what does this player consider strength? 
right? That's the uh, the second level of all that. But um, what you don't want to do concerning bets and bet sizing, you don't want to bet bigger when your hand is better and less when your hand is perceived weaker. That's I mean for um, very heads up players, that's going to be a dead giveaway. All right, so what you need to do is pick a bet size. That means you're going to bet the same bet size with a pair of aces uh, and with a pair of twos. You'll, you'll bet the same uh, open raise size when you've got a uh, five, six suited and also, you know, when you've got a pair of tens, whatever. It makes it impossible for you to read. Now, that being said, you should also skillfully adapt to your opponents. And again, here with uh, pain levels and stuff like that that I mentioned above, um, and also change up your play from time to time. I mean, limp raising that exists, um, min raising from time to time uh, when you got a monster uh, against one or two players, also possible. You can, you know, you, everything is possible as long as you change it up skillfully. But as a general rule, and especially for novice players, bet precisely the same amount always for at least the first year. <laughs> Uh, if you can stick to that, it's just going to make you impossible to read uh, based on based on your bet sizing. And yeah, I I can't stress that enough. This uh, novice bet size equals perceived strength. <laughs> it's it's just a dead giveaway in so many different in so many different rounds that you play. And um, yeah, uh, you know, pick your three to four big lines. Uh, I would just say as a as a general rule, if you're playing big stack, go ahead and make it four. Uh, anytime you're outside of the cutoff or the button. And yeah, three and a half when you're on the cutoff, and three when you're on the button for an open raise steal. Um, maybe when you get into steal situations on the, in the small blind, you want to pump it back up to four, just because of the positional disadvantage post flop. Um, and you're gonna add then one big blind per limper every every time you make that move. So let's say you're um, in middle position with yeah a pair of jacks. You get two limpers in front of you and uh, actions to you. All right, we're playing in 100 here, so small blinds 50 cents, big blinds a dollar, uh, two limpers for a buck a piece, and it's on you. So you're gonna raise four times the one, big blind, right, so four bucks, plus one per limper, so you're gonna raise it to a maximum of six. All right, so that's what's meant with that. Don't worry if this is unclear, we're gonna get into some calculators that I've created here shortly, as well as um, example hands to make all this very, very clear to you guys. So good, so that's that's that. Okay, the one bet is just posting the big blind, the two bet is the first raise uh, after limpers, the three bet is then a re-raise. So what I want you guys to do here is not only three bet from time to time, that means re-raise, but also be consistent in your bet sizing. So three times the two bet amount, Okay, the raise amount, plus one per cold caller. Cold caller is just a person who called the open raise, or the first raise, say. Um, scenario. You're, again, middle position, and you got your jacks, <laughs> and you think they're good, and you get one uh, under the gun plus two raiser who raises it up to four big blinds. Uh, guy after him who just calls the four big blinds cold, all right, and then you raise it up. So what you're going to do is you're going to raise three times the four, which is 12, plus one per cold caller, which is another four, makes it 16. Okay, and if any of you are thinking, you know, how did this guy come up with this uh, <laughs> with this betting amount? You know, you're you're a very clear thinking person. That's a very good question to ask. Uh, you should never just accept something that a coach tells you or that anyone tells you, for example, um, just because they said it. it. There's a mathematical reason behind all of this, and that's what we'll get into here shortly. Now, four betting, that is a re-re-raise pre-flop. And here, it, it's okay to uh, make that amount 2.5 to 3.5 uh, times the three bet prior to that. Again, always keeping in mind <laughs> this rule here. Anytime you make a move, if it's half your stack or more, it's a direct push. It's not just this 2.5 or 3.5, which once you start getting into the realms of uh, four bets, especially five bets, um, you're looking very often at a pre-flop push, even big stack. Uh, deep stacked, maybe not, but 
um, yeah, big stacks, say 100 big blinds, something like 75 to 100 or 120 big blinds, you're definitely looking at a yeah, almost a push here. Four betting, definitely push uh, five betting, which is um, what you see after the fact. This is a five bet or a re 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 raise pre flop, and here you have this AI, not artificial intelligence, but all in. Um, good. If you're playing a pot limit game, for example, pot limit Omaha, and um, the betting is no longer no limit, but based on the size of the pot, there's a formula for that. And what the formula is is the current pot plus two times the amount to call. That's the maximum that you can raise given any uh, betting round. Um, there is in Pot Limit Omaha in most games um, no cap to the amount that you can raise and re-raise and re-raise, etc. Um, as you'll find in fixed limit games, which normally have a cap of yeah four bets per betting round. Anyway, so we've got two examples here. Um, we have an open race here of an uh, 1.5 for the big blinds. I'm sorry for the the big blind, the small blind, uh, and the call. If you were just to limp, would be one. Okay, one big blind. Uh, your max pot size raise preflop as the open raiser would be two times the amount to call, which is two big blinds plus the 1.5, okay? That makes it a total of 3.5 big blinds. Uh, that's a pre-flop raise um, example, an open raise example. A flop raise example might be when you're in exactly this scenario, you make your 3.5 um, big blind pot raise and the small blind then calls you cold. Uh, flop hits and we've got a total of eight big blinds in the pot at that point. Small blind then decides not to bet the full pot, but six big blinds, so three-fourths pot. Your raise is in the total pot at that point, which is eight plus six plus his bet. Okay, that's 14, plus twice the amount to call, which is six. So it's 14 plus the 12, i.e. you can raise to a maximum of 26 big blinds. Now, that doesn't mean you have to raise 26 big blinds, but you can raise up to a maximum of that. Um, two examples for Pot Limit Omaha. Again, this is uh, very much tailored to No Limit Texas Hold'em, but that's how that's how that would run in Pot Limit um, betting games. Next point you see here is limping, limp calling, limp raising. Again, see the three bet sizing. Um, if you limp, all that simply means is that it's pre-flop. Uh, you've got the small blind, the big blind, and instead of raising, you just call the big blind one time. Okay. Let's say after the fact, somebody then raises it up uh, to isolate you, uh, which will be the next point. Uh, let's say he raises it up to five big blinds. Okay, so you can, you know, betting comes around to you, and you then have the option to call or raise, or of course fold. So you can limp call. That means you just call the big blind and then uh, call the raise after the fact. Or you can call the big blind, i.e. limp into the pot, and then raise it after the fact. Um, different places where you can do that on different um, tables and yeah again all very table specific opponent specific and position specific uh, game specific etc but yeah limping is simply calling the big blind pre-flop not raising um, like that after you then limp of course if there's somebody behind you if you're not closing the betting with that limp um, which you'll actually never be <laughs> doing in no limit uh, Texas Hold'em uh, then there's going to be somebody who can always raise it up behind you, and that's something you need to be ready for. Good. Uh, B7, isolation raises. Uh, this is, to isolate somebody, it's, uh, it can be used in different different scenarios. One is when there's simply a bear, or, or one limper, say, uh, before you're to act, and you then raise that up. All right. Um, so we have your isolation raises after limpers. It's, again, four big blinds plus one per limper. Uh, or after, after an open raiser, then you're going to look at the three bet sizing again. So that means, for example, uh, let's say you've got a fish who's open raising with 25% of all of his hands um, in any given position. And you want to isolate this fish in position. So basically what you can do is just say this fish just raised uh, three big blinds. Um, you're going to then raise three times the two bet, which would be nine, um, plus anybody who had cold called after the fact. And again, don't worry about it, we'll get into the specifics here shortly. 
Cold calling, also referred to as calling open, especially in statistics, that's what you're going to see in uh, hold a manager uh, or flat calling. And you can do that both in position and out of position. Uh, out of position, the only time you can actually cold call out of position is basically in the blinds, uh, pre-flop at least. Squeezing, this is a huge topic. And um, yeah, actually, as is the case with most of the videos that we're, that we're producing here uh, in this initial winter in a week series, um, yeah, you can make entire entire videos just on this topic. Uh, when to squeeze, when not to squeeze, when to three bet, when not to three bet, when to four bet, when not to four bet. Um, yeah, more or less every single point we could expound upon uh, greatly. But the idea again of this of this series is to give you guys the essential information that you need um, to be basically way ahead of most of the fields at any table. Um, again, yeah, yeah, low and middle limits. So um, squeezing as such is a definition. Okay, it's basically a three bet after an open raiser and one cold caller. Um, you can consider it a squeeze if there is an open raise and one cold caller plus one over caller. Um, but if that would show up exactly in statistics, I'm not uh, in your in your stats. I'm not sure. I think they just define the squeeze specifically as one two bet one pre-flop raise, one cold caller, and then you make a three bet after the fact. And the way you want to do this is basically uh, on any given squeeze, again, barring skillful deviation from <laughs> from these amounts, um, as a general rule, your squeezes need to be about four times the two bet amount, or four times the initial raise. So we've got an example here. There's uh, uh, three times the two bet plus one per cold caller. And in order to do that, you, you also really need to have a uh, proper understanding of what you're going to be able to, to hit on any given flop, um, yeah, given your holding. And then also you need to understand, um, at least have a general idea of what your opponents can hit, right? the playable flops they can hit given certain ranges. Um, and these topics are for our advanced videos. Uh, it's nothing that we need to really look at here, but I want to go ahead and show you guys right now what this hitting playable flops um, spreadsheet actually is. So very briefly, this table shows you guys um, the probability of hitting a high equity hand with the following pre-flop ranges. And what I've done here is used uh, the program Flopzilla um, to generate these numbers based on uh, certain groups of ranges. So here you see this is uh, queens are better. It's 1.36% of all hands. Um, for group one, jacks are better. Ace king, three, yeah, three, basically 3%. Three yeah, 9% all the way down to 25%. Uh, basically any pair, any suited ace, any ace nine offsuit, any broadway, any one gap max stretch suited connector and any max stretch suited connector basically 5 4 suited up to 10 jack suited um, the way we define this is basically flopping two pair better or eight out plus draws so um, these this table here doesn't ex uh, doesn't include top pairs uh, or over pairs uh, that's all defined yeah in the later sections I just want to show you guys this to give you an idea of um, what you'll definitely have access to as a member of our site. Um, this gets very, very detailed. It's also uh, very specific for full ring and six max play, but that'll just give you an, a general idea of, uh, of how that looks.